Are you thinking about building a model railway project whilst we are all socially distancing? Need some ideas on where to start? Let me inspire you. Part 3 of my inspiration series covers small double O and HO gauge end-to-end -end layouts that can be built by one person. Hi, I'm Andrew Gebby. You're watching the Heritage and Model Rail channel. And if this is the first time to this channel, become a subscriber. And don't forget the bell icon so that you can be notified when new content appears. Eden Road TMD, modelled in OO gauge, was presented by Cooper and District Model Railway Club. Eden Road TMD is a representation of a traction maintenance depot set loosely between 2000s and present day to allow a range of motive power to be used. The depot is operated by Direct Rail Services DRS, to service their fleet of locomotives. Visiting traction from other UK operators such as GBRF, West Coast Railways, Freightliner, Colas and DB Cargo can also be seen, along with some stabled coaching stock. The layout contains a twin road locomotive shed, a smaller shed, refuelling point, a train wash and some storage sidings for basic maintenance. A fenced compound is used for the storage of FNA nuclear flask carriers between movements. This HO gauge layout is Humber Yard exhibited by Ian Rankin and Keith Fox. Humber Yard is a fictitious layout set in southern Ontario, Canada for the left-hand board and northern New York State, USA for the right-hand board. The layout is actually made up of two members' home layouts with a fiddle yard in the middle and an imaginary US-Canada border running through the middle of the fiddle yard. The time period is the late 1950s through to the 1960s and includes typical rolling stock, road vehicles and buildings for the time as seen in these areas. The layout measures 13 foot 6 by 18 inches across four boards. The layout is to HO gauge 187 scale and uses Pico Code 75 with electrofrog turnouts. The layout usually runs on normal analog 12 volt DC controllers, but with no modification to the control system can be run on digital DCC. The buildings are mainly kits, some heavily modified from the Walters Cornerstone series. Stock is mainly Backman. My thanks to Ian for the information. Here you can view the OO gauge layout Glendram Distillery, exhibited by Alan Rosamond of the Kyle Model Railway Club. Glendram Distillery is a small end-to-end -end shunting layout based on the old Dornock line. The distillery is fictitious but is representative of ones in the area. A single platform serves the distillery with a cassette in the fiddle yard enabling the easy swapping of stock. The layout measures 6 feet 6 by 3 feet, with one scenic and one fiddle yard making it car transportable. The distillery building is scratch built, with two kit built cottages. Track is Pico 75 fine scale, with Pico points. Control is analog, with stock by Backman and Hornby. My thanks to Alan for the information. This double O gauge layout is Lockburn, exhibited by Keith Taylor. Lockburn is a small fictional diesel maintenance depot in the north of Glasgow. The period is either 1960 with green diesels or 1980 with blue diesels. The layout was inspired by Ian Footers. Built to be car transportable, the layout measures 7 feet by 18 inches across two boards. Buildings are kit built from Trackman and Inglenook. Track and points are Pico Code 75. 
Control is DC for 1960 green diesels or DCC for 1980s blue diesels. The layout is run with two operators, one controlling the lower level and the other controlling the upper level. Stock is a mixture of Backman, Hornby and Helljan. My thanks to Keith for the information. This double O gauge 4mm layout is Camel Key, exhibited by Terry Robinson. Camel Key is a typical North Cornwall XLSWR station on the River Camel lying on the Rock Delabel Railway, had it been built. The station with its good shed bears a resemblance to Padstow on the opposite side of the river. There are local passenger services together with express trains from Waterloo. I managed to speak to Terry at the show, who gave me a lot more information. Well, the inspiration really is all about Padstow at the end of the Withered Arm, you know, down in North Cornwall. So really it runs stock that would have run to Padstow, but of course Camel Key never existed. Um, but So you'll see T9s and N-classes and BT Well tanks and those sort of things. How big is it? 10 foot 6 long and around about 16 inches wide. Buildings, are they, uh, what are they, scratch or kits? Yeah, the station building, uh, which is very similar to the one that you would see at, at, at Panstow. The good shed to the left is uh, um, scratch built. I believe the signal box was an adapter kit, but I don't know whose it was. The, the back scene is just basically a dull grey, bit like outside today, really. <laughs> <laughs> What's your track? It's basically um, Code 75 uh, truck in all places, but the Pico points have been pretty well heavily modified. All the big chunky bits where you put point motors have been taken all off. Uh, it's all controlled by DCC, it's N NCE. Uh, all the point motors are, are, are tortoise or cobalt, there's a, there's a mixture of them underneath. Your stock, where is it? what's that from? The stock is pretty well all propriety. It's a mixture of all the main characters, you know, Batman, Hornby, uh, Elgin, etc. A couple of dapper things. There's a little scene in front of the hotel here because the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh made a, a spot visit, unknown to the Dutchman man, uh, to come and visit to, the, uh, to watch the, uh, the Morris dancers down here. You, you can operate with one by using the automatic three sequence, but we, we tend to a minimum of two. Uh, on a three-day show, uh, we, we decided we needed three people. It's, uh, three days is quite gruelling, actually. My thanks to Terry for the information. I was contacted during the week by Paul who sent me some details on his N-gauge layout back and forth, which he's currently working on. It represents a German double track through country station set in Epoch 2. The layout is square and fits into a corner and measures one meter by one meter. The track has an unusual setup called a dog bone. If you're not sure how it works, trace the track with your finger and it will soon become clear. The majority of the track is Pico Flexi Track, whilst the tight curves on the circle are Pico Set Track. This is because Flexi Track can't be used on that tighter radius. The two crossovers are the most critical part of the track. They can't be left or right handed, but must be of equal length, set at an angle of 25 degrees. The baseboard is made from a 50mm insulation material called Celotex to which is glued a quarter inch ply sheet. Holes for signals and points are reinforced with plastic tubing which is pressed and glued in place. Buildings are Faller, stock is Fleischmann and control is DC. This double O gauge layout is No Place, exhibited by Les Richardson. Set in the northwest of County Durham, no place disposal point was built by the Ministry of Fuel and Power in 1942 on the site of the East Stanley Colliery. The screens were linked to the Beamish Railway near Beamish Station. A wagon repair shop was opened on the site, later taken over as a preservation shed by a group of Durham University Railway Society members. The whole site closed in the late 80s and was levelled. The preserved locos moving on to other locations. This of course isn't the real history of the East Stanley site after the closure, but it makes a might have been 
that fits the size of layout I wanted to build. Modeled sometime between 1970 and 1975, the layout is DCC controlled using NCE cabs with magnetically modified tension lock couplers to allow some shunting of the screens. There is a vintage passenger train which appears from time to time. No Place is a real place near Beamish. The original village of No Place has disappeared but the name lives on allied to the next door village of Cooperative Villas. This double O gauge layout is St David's MPD, exhibited by the Model Railway Society of Ireland. Based on nowhere in particular, St David's combines a small locomotive refuelling and servicing facility, along with a single platform terminus station, representing a town or city terminus directly below High Street St David's. Despite the small size of the sidings, the space accommodated by the railway was once bigger, as where the garage is now was once railway property. A lot of detail has been incorporated into the layout with the busy main street, houses and rear laneway along with the garage MOT centre and the depot itself with its inspection pits and refuelling road. The small station is just long enough to accommodate a single or two car DMU and this shuffles back and forth on a regular interval. The back scene was originally made from another layout which was dressed up with cuttings from model railway magazines. Buildings are a mix of kits and scratch build. The loco shed is from America, modified by adding a brick wall and cutting it to make it fit. Control is DCC for the yard and DC for the station line. Ready to run locos have been modified to run under various themes, the main one being Scottish exiles. This double O gauge layout is Dolby Lane, exhibited by Ian Brown of the Bonnybridge Model Railway Club. Dolby Lane is a fictional small serving depot near the Midlands Main Line, operated by Colas Rail, but provides basic servicing, fuel and minor repairs for other operators. With two boards measuring 4 feet by 18 inches, this fictional end-to-end -end layout is only its second public outing. All buildings are scratch built with track and points by Pico. Control is DCC by Gage Master Prodigy Advanced with all locos sound fitted. Stock is a mixture of Hornby and Backman. My thanks to Ian for the information. In the Boindy, modelled in OO gauge and presented by Greenock Model Railway Club. Inver Boindy is an OO scale end-to-end -end layout set in the Highlands of Scotland. The layout is based on the Banff track plan and features scratch-built buildings and a seascape with the Boindy burn crossing the layout. It also features a small harbour and a local distillery which supplies blend for Johnny Walker whisky. Inver Boindy is based on the 50s and 60s era with a beaching reprieve allowing blue diesels to run the service into the 70s. Because of the unusual track plan, passenger services were gravity shunted, a feature to look out for on the layout. This HO gauge layout is Williamson River, exhibited by the Cooper Model Railway Club. Williamson River represents a small industrial line somewhere in British Columbia, Canada. Featuring a small terminus station where Bud rail cars take passengers to work, the line has mixed freight services from both Canadian National and Canadian Pacific. A small fuel terminal receives fuel tankers thanks to its track access. Cut lumber is delivered to the timber yard by truck and departs in mixed freight cars. The larger industrial building receives and dispatches multiple boxcars. We purchased the layout in 2017 as we needed a small layout that could be transported by car to exhibitions. It was named in memory of club member and former chairman Gregor Williamson. As Gregor had an interest in Canadian railways, we run mostly CP and CN railroad locos and freight cars. 
although you will see stock from railroads all over North America. The club has decided to keep the layout on a longer term and completely refurbish it. This has included building a complete new board replacing two individual sections, a full rewire, some new scenery along with a general overhaul of the layout. The layout is 10 feet by 4 feet across two boards which can be transported by car. Buildings are scratch built and track is Pico code 75. Stock is Backman, Cato and Atlas. My thanks to the Cooper members who helped me mount cameras on wagons and at various places on the layout. Check out other content that I have by selecting the playlist. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you there.